to another fabulous edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today on the show, it's uh, Mac Day. Mac Day, Mac Day. So uh, if I listen to my friends, the Apple people, and I say, we're going to do Mac maintenance, the average uh, response is, you don't need to maintain the Mac. It self-maintains. Plus, it makes you coffee. Right, Sean? I never said that. <laughs> Now, I always give people a hard time because they say, you know, the Mac's wonderful and it's, it's lovely, but it really does need some basic maintenance, doesn't it? Right. It's uh, not quite as much as your Windows box might need, but uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go through a few basic steps. Everyone needs to do a little bit of cleanup. All right. Well, let's take a look at this message and we'll be right back. <laughs> Well, you know, every, probably every month and at least every six months, I got to go into my Windows machine. I got to update my drivers. I got to defrag my drive. I got to update antivirus signatures. On the Mac, what do you got to do? Uh, we're done. <laughs> okay, That's it for yeah. LabRats this week. I'm Andy Walker. <laughs> No, you know what? It's it's okay. It's a little bit more uh, complicated than that. Is it okay? Yeah, we actually uh, got an email recently from a gentleman named Hans from yeah. India. He was yeah. from Germany, moved to India with his family, and he was having tons and tons of problems. I guess Asia is a bit of a hotbed for viruses and trojans and that sort of thing. He says he was always having problems with his his Windows machine. Finally, he just gave up. Did and Andy and Sean, I am here in India, and my computer is broken, so I'm becoming a Mac head. Right? That's sort of that. It, when, when I read the email, you, that's. You know how to make fans. I know, but I love you, Hans. Really, I do. But it was right. good. No, he, and he yeah. was worrying about his English, and his English was fabulous. His so. English was great. Yeah. Um, but he asked a basic question. It's like the computer dealer said, you don't need an antivirus. Wrong. <laughs> we'll talk about that. <laughs> and he said, you don't need to defragment your drive. Wrong. Will you just wait for it? <laughs> All right, so. He wanted to know, are these things true? Do, do you really need yeah. to do so little when it comes to Mac? Yeah. And for the most part, sure. Um, but there are a few basic maintenance techniques that you should perform regularly. OK, so, uh, so the number one most important thing you should do on your Mac? Um, well, the clean the nice, clean, pretty. Clean the thing, uh -huh. yeah. Just, just, just clean it up, so you know, vacuum all up the the girls will like it. Yeah, I mean, I don't want us to get into, like, there's nothing wrong with this machine at all. I mean, let's, let's talk about antivirus just for, for a sure. second. Yeah, no, I think it's important. Um, now, there's some people out there that will tell you that you never have to put an antivirus program on a Mac, on a Mac and you never have to worry about it on a Mac. Yeah. Now, I'm of the opinion that if you are very careful, you don't need an antivirus program on your Mac. Just because the level of security on the operating system uh, at this point is something that if it tries to change something deep within the system, it'll ask you for the password. So if something is asking you for your password, don't type it in unless you were actually changing the system at that point. And I'm of the belief that most people, uh, you know, can be fooled. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, you know, when the Mac OS X came out, it, there was no viruses written for it. And that happened mm -hmm. for the longest time. And then all of a sudden, a couple of viruses came out, so we finally wrote them. Now, they weren't yeah. nasty. No, they and weren't pernicious. But they came out. Yeah, but the, the thing that's worth mentioning is they use social engineering rather than taking advantage of anything on the machine itself. That's true. Now, to, to get to this virus, to get that virus installed on your system, first of all, you had to do something that you shouldn't do, opening mm -hmm. up something that's unsolicited in your e-box. You had to type in the password when it asked for it, and then you had to type in the password again, I believe. So you had to really compromise your own really security. hard to get the virus on the system. Right, so yeah. it, that's one of the... the reasons that the Mac is more secure is because most of the time you do have to type. There are a few instances where you don't have to type that password, but in general when it's something that's that nasty, you do have to type the password. Mm -hmm. Now that's not saying that that's never going to change, but... Um, well, this is where, this is in my heart of hearts why, I mean, ultimately I am a conservative security guy, mm -hmm. and I think that, you know, just having complacency is dangerous unto itself. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you, if you are concerned about these kinds of things, you know, an antivirus is not going to break the bank. No, oh, but it might break your system performance. Oh, well, and that's see, a good point. That, that's one thing. With yeah. the Macintosh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. You might, if yeah. if you're worried that you might get caught out, then certainly look into it. I'm not sure that it's going to do much good, except for draining your bank account of seventy bucks and eating up some system resources. Okay, at this point, all right. The the basic rule on 
on keeping your machine free of uh, any bad software is do not type your password in at yeah. any point if it asks for it yeah. when you weren't expecting it. Yeah, right, there you go. Installing a piece of software and it asks you for your uh, password, yes, because you were doing that on purpose. Okay, defragging. Do we need to defrag a Mac? No, you don't. Nope. Not anymore. You used to have to defrag the Mac all of the time mm -hmm. back in the, the um, OS 9 days. Now, why yeah. not? Uh, it's just the way that the, the file system works. Now, it's moved over to a version of Unix uh, called BSD. It's right. built on that. And every time you put in software, it optimizes the system. So you install software, it optimizes everything. So the need to defrag this system is very, very minimal. Great. So the operating system difference. basically takes care of it for you. That's a wonderful feature. I wish uh, that mm -hmm. would be the case with Windows machines. And even with Vista, it has a built-in mm -hmm. defrag that takes care of it. But mm -hmm. uh, it still takes a little bit of effort. You yeah, know, we did a bit of uh, work on, uh, on Windows XP beforehand and looked at defrag to see what type of performance boost you would get from defragging your system. Yeah. Even on a Windows machine, the performance boost isn't that much. No. So it, even on Windows, I think defragging is something that actually can introduce more problems to your system than it can solve if you're not having any problems with well, it. Well, and here's the problem. You know, if, you, if you're not really familiar with what, what fragmentation is on a computer, here's, on, on a Windows machine, here's what happens. Okay? So you have a nice uh, hard drive, and you have a file over here, uh, and you delete it. So now you have a big hole over here. And you go along and you take your great big novel, right? And your big novel, it saves a piece in here. And then all the way over here is lots of space. So it saves another piece over there. So next time you go to read that, the head has to go read it here. OK, now i got to go up, and i got to go all the way over here and read the rest of it. And then you delete this piece here and add to this novel, and then it starts putting it back over here. Right, exactly. So, so it's going like all over the drive. So there's a lot of movement on, on the, uh, the drive. The head's moving all over the place. Mm -hmm. Slow access, that sort of thing. Is it a major problem? No. Does it slow your system down? Absolutely. Yes. Um, so that's the fragmentation on Windows. Uh, and you're telling me on the Mac that doesn't it's, happen. Uh, it, it, you get fragmentation on there, and I'm, I'm positive that you can get defragmentation programs for it. But yeah, don't worry about it. Good for the okay. most part. All right. Now there is a particular thing you should do on a regular basis with a Mac. Right. And one of the things you want to do is check your file permissions. Uh huh. Now uh, you can end up with because it's based on Unix. Every this bit of software on there has a permission, read, write, execute, blah, blah, blah. All of those things will have different file permissions. And they can get messed up over the course of doing work on there. You'll work on a program, it'll change it. Um, you install some other program, it'll change file permissions around. So what you want to do is you want to make sure everything is the way it should be in your system. So you open up a Finder window, hit uh, Control, Finder window? Or Command N. Go into your utilities folder, your, your applications. This is the way most people get to it. I've actually made a shortcut to utilities there. Go into applications, scroll down until you get to utilities. Double click on that. Then look for your disk utility. Now, yes. this is what you would use to actually set up your uh, hard disks on your system. So you install a new disk on there. You want to format it, partition it, blah, blah, blah. This is where you would go do it. On the left-hand pane, you'll have the hard disks. So we've got my MacBook hard drive, and the other partition here is my Windows partition for, oh, for bootcamp. You you've got Windows right. on here, too? Yeah, so okay. we want to use the MacBook HD, uh, whichever one is your main system drive. And you see down over here, you've got verify disk permissions and repair disk permissions. And you see what it flies up. Determine if access control permissions are valid. Uh -huh. And on this one, it says repair control permissions if necessary. I just go straight to repair disk permissions. Right. So what this will do is it'll actually go through all of the, the files on the hard drive, uh, look to see what is uh, busted, basically, what is set incorrectly, and it'll fix it automatically for you. So okay. you know it's going through here right now. Now, this doesn't do it all by itself every month. You physically have to do this. This is a manual yeah. thing that you have to do yourself. What, you every can, month, every two months? You what? can set it up to do this. I would suggest once a month is a, a good choice. Okay. Uh, right. You don't want to do this a, you know, overkill. You don't really need to do this every day or anything like right. that, not even every week. I'd say once a month is right. very good for this. Okay. So this will go uh, through. You can see it's almost done. It usually takes about two or three minutes to get through it. Larger hard drives will take you a little sure. bit longer. Okay. Uh, there we go. Uh, privileges have been verified and repaired on the selected volume. So it didn't take long at all. Okay. You're done. That's it? That's, That's it That's all that. the Mac utility uh, fixes you have to do? Um, that is the majority of uh, the, the basic ones. Now, there's other things that you can do. Uh, now, I uh, downloaded a program called Onyx, okay. um, which is, uh, was actually Ooh. recommended. Uh, my partner works in... Um, in file permit or in in print production, yeah, and they use Macs in this, and uh, so one of the she's a desktop publisher. Desktop publishers, right? So um, she actually came back to me one day and said, "You should use Onyx." And I'm like, "What's Onyx?" Ooh. And um, she showed this to me. So this one, it'll ask you for your password right off the bat. You've launched this program. You can type the password in. 
Um, and what that's doing is it's giving that program access to your system. Now here you go, you've got uh, this taskbar here that gives you various uh, things. So you've got maintenance, you can do the verify and repair permissions here. If you've got this, you can do it from this console instead of going into that uh, console we okay. were just in. So Cleaning. it's like Norton Utilities for Mac, really, is it? Right, well, kind of, kind of except for it's free. Oh, it's free. Yeah, we like and, free. Um, you can do cleaning and get rid of all the caches, blah, blah, blah. You can check out log files. You can actually set automation so that it will do this automatically. Um, and you can look into a lot of other things. And, and parameters here, this is actually kind of neat. This you must can, be like the Windows uh, UI, Tweak UI kind of thing. It's like Tweak UI. So yeah. you can actually go into your uh, Finder, your Dock, Dashboard, and Expose. Just change all the little settings for your uh, machine. You can show arrows in the scroll bar, double the bottom and right. You don't like the way that that's set up, you can change them to single at both ends or you know at the bottom like normal. You can just change a lot of different things about that. So that's Onyx. That's one thing you can do that sort of automates that whole process. And where do we get it from? That one, I'll put the, the uh, thing in the show notes, okay. the, the location. You can find most of these programs that are available through a, a great site called versiontracker.com. Oh, yeah. And they, they have lots of freeware. All the freeware, Mac freeware. They have updates that are uh, available for commercial programs, that sort of thing. Very good. And one last thing I want to look at is um, the bit of maintenance that you want to look at on most computers is disk space. Sure. So if you're always running out of disk space, you want to make sure that you can clear off the gunk that you don't need. Um, and this, again, is a free file, but uh, they ask for a, a little bit of an upgrade. Donation uh, sorry, wire. donation. Yeah. yeah, so I mean... Reasonable. So we've got 17 gigabytes free on this. We're going to open the, uh, the volume on this. You click on the hard drive that you want to check out. So if you're running really low on space on it, you would click that and uh, it would check it. So uh, let's go to break now while this is uh, chugging away. And when we come back, we'll uh, take a quick look at what it found and uh, why this is a great program to have. All right. We'll uh, see you in a minute. It's Camtasia Studio, the fabulous screencast software from TechSmith. Record what's on your screen, narrate it, and share it online. Create demos, screencasts, training, and more. And rest assured, Camtasia Studio is made by wholesome programmers in Okemos, Michigan, the home of the hardiest geeks around. Quick to learn, easy to use, it's Camtasia Studio. Download your free trial and start screencasting today. <laughs> Well, you may have just seen a 30-second commercial, but we've been away for five minutes running this application, and we have mm. results. Yeah, and it takes that long because it goes through every single file that's on your hard drive, the larger your hard drive. And I've got a 160 gigabyte um, drive in here, as you may have remembered from the previous episode where I upgraded it. Yeah. Um, but it's got like a ton of stuff on here. It went through every single file, looked at the file size, where it is, and um, you know, it's kind of funny what type though. of file it is. Yeah. So this it's, is a. It looks like it's like a I don't know a hair follicle under a microscope or something. Or a processor designed from AMD. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, is that so a here's, here's, here's all the cache. Here's some of the, the the pipelines. Anyways, now what does it mean? Okay, so what this is, it actually has taken every single file and represented it graphically. The larger the file is, bless you, Geo. Geo, Geo is uh, allergic to the cats. I, mean, I think he sneezed on a previous episode as well. <laughs> all right, so go on. Um, so every file, the larger it is, the larger the size of the block it is in disk inventory X. Uh -huh. So you can see really quickly. What's taking up the space on your hard drive? Okay. So what's the big brown thing? So this big brown thing right here is uh, WinXP. So this is actually <laughs> my Parallels <laughs> partition, my, oh, my yeah. virtual Windows XP installation. All right. The one next big to it fat windows is my funny. Linux installation. So oh, that's a little wee. I, okay. I don't want to get rid of those. No. Um, these things right here. Well, some of the Mac users out there might beg to differ. M MP4s, yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> they, can, they can disagree. Hack 5. You know, I want to keep a lot of these files here. So, yeah. um, But then you'll see something like this. My great movie. <laughs> the, yeah. life, the life and times of Sean Carruthers. I did a really great movie a while ago. And what this is actually is a DVD project that I did. I think I actually put together a, a lab rat sampler at one point. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I'm done with it. Yeah. I don't want to keep it. But look at this. It's taking up 4.2 Gigabytes, big file yeah. on there, right? And yeah. I don't want that. So I wouldn't have found that just by going directly. Yeah, because there's zillions of files on there. Okay, right. So that's right. sort of saying, hey, this is a really big file. Yeah, it's huge. And you know what? And so how do you? I want to get rid of it. I'm just going to right click on it, which uh, you can do with a right mouse or you can do with the control. So yeah. control click, yeah. uh, and just uh, kapow, and it's gone. Oof, oh, neat. Little animation. All right. Well, uh, there you go. Uh, as you can see, Macs don't need uh, much um, maintenance. And no, so maybe I should go out and buy one. Yeah. Maybe I should. You're not going to. I know. You've got one over there. It's 
You're using it to hold up a lamp. It plays or my Duran Duran albums from the 1980s. All right, uh, a couple of final words. Uh, I want to tell you about a um, little charity I've created here in Toronto called uh, Little Geeks. Uh, what we're trying to do is um, gather up about 500 computers from people you know don't need them anymore, Macs and PCs, uh, and give them to 500 underprivileged kids. So that's my pilot project for the next few months. Can we, I have one? You're not underprivileged. You're overprivileged. He's got Macs and PCs and Linux boxes. Um, anyway, so if you can help out, if you're in the Toronto area or in the southern Ontario and you uh, want to help us out, we need people, we need bodies to help retrofit these computers. Um, and uh, you know, if you just want to send moral support, great. Uh, one of these days, we're gonna, once we get this pilot project off the ground, I want to expand it. I want to put it into places in the US and in, across Canada. We had an email the other day from um, Australia saying, bring it to Australia. So maybe we'll do that in the future. So check it out, littlegeeks.org. Um, and uh, no pictures today, I guess. No pictures today, but uh, you know, send, send yours in. Yeah, we like, uh, so send them as a file attachments, one megabyte or less, please. Uh, put your face in front of the camera. We get lots of kittens, we get lots of cars and things like that, but uh, we want to see you with your kittens and cars if you want. Yeah, and you know, you don't have to send ones that are one megabyte, so they'll look good on the screen even if they're about 100K. There so, you go. You're good. All right. Send it to uh, attach it as uh, feedback at labrats.tv. That's it for us this week. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you ready? Okay, well, that is a problem from either of us. Oh, you're lying. <laughs> you're <laughs> He's an English. <laughs> <laughs>